Hello, welcome to the Everyman Puppet Theater video collection. My name is Laura Ann Ewald. I'm the founder of Everyman Puppet Theater and the Puppeteer. And here I want to tell you today about the puppet potential of various materials. You might think to make puppets you have to go out and buy a whole bunch of expensive stuff, but you really don't. There's an amazing amount of material in your home today that you can use to make puppets. And I want to show you some examples today. For example, we've been having instant pudding this week. I took two boxes of instant pudding, stapled them together, and I now have a potential mouth puppet. It's going to take some colored paper, some glue, who knows what else. But I have these two boxes, I staple them together, and I have the basis foundation for a mouth puppet. That's true of so many different things. If you have for example, paper products are great for making puppets. You have your paper plates, right? You have your little bathroom cups. You have small paper bowls. You have large paper bowls. And you have small paper plates. And they all can all make puppets. For example, let me show you what we have. This is Pearl the Turtle. She stars in Pearl the Turtle Saves a Day and other various stories. She is made with common materials. Her shell is simply a bigger table, a large paper bowl. As you can see, it's simply a large paper bowl. Fits right on there. Her belly is a cut paper plate. So I have a paper bowl and a paper plate. How do I keep them apart? This is the best stuff. If you have any relatives or friends who are buying new office equipment, printers, whatever, computers, it is almost all packaged in this foam these days. It's not styrofoam. Styrofoam is really hard to use. But this is a soft foam that you can cut using scissors. And all I did was put a block of this inside between the shell and the paper plate, and I got some space. Her head, you know what her head made? You will never guess what her head's made out of. Toilet paper roll. Everybody has toilet paper rolls in their house. I cut it a little bit. I formed it together. I put some felt on the outside of it. I put a couple pom-poms in for eyeballs, but it is still your basic paper roll, toilet paper roll. You can also use, of course, your paper towel rolls, and they can move for other, work for other things. So, paper products from home, basic stuff. I did have to buy the felt for her. I did have to buy the googly eyes. I did buy the um, the hot glue, which was a lot of hot glue to make her, and I had to buy pipe cleaners for the toenails, but she started out as a paper puppet, paper bowl, paper plate puppet. Now the pig, here's the pig, he's the same thing, he's paper. His main body is paper plate, right? Just a plain paper plate, that's his body. His face and his back are the small paper bowl. You can see I've got one on his face and I have one for his body. His feet are actually little medicine cups that come on liquid cold medicine. Now, I did not go out and buy and drink four bottles of liquid cold medicine. I have been collecting these little cups for about 20 years, and I have a lot of them. So whenever something comes in the house that looks interesting, that's an interesting shape, that has puppet potential, find a box, put it aside, make sure everyone in your family knows that you're collecting interesting shaped objects so that you can make puppets. His nose is actually a bathroom cup cut down and I covered it with both um, felt and that um, eighth inch foam foam sheets and he actually can get a close-up look at him has eyelashes and you can buy false eyelashes at Walmart for about you can get four of them for about six dollars which is kind of fun they make the puppets come alive so paper products 
Now, I made him kind of fancy because I was going to be doing a puppet show, but you can certainly play at home, use these shapes, make your paper puppets with colored paper and white glue and paper products like, like plates and bowls and have a lot of fun with it. As I said, I collect everything that looks interesting. I collect every plastic jar that comes along. I have two sizes of peanut butter jars. I don't know where the other one went now. And peanut butter jars are great for putting what? Pieces of puppets in. You find interesting things that are small, you need a place to keep them. So take a plastic peanut butter jar, take the wrapper off, and then you can store, wash it thoroughly, and then you can store your pieces of puppet in it. I never throw out a scrap of felt. I have a big pile of little pieces of all different colors of felt because I might need some eyeballs in her nose. I don't need a big piece of felt for that, so I always keep my little scraps of felt. The other day I bought applesauce, the little snack version of them, because I was traveling. Wouldn't these make great feet? Or they might make a good snout. Perfect shapes. I wash them. Put them in my puppet box. I do a Christmas show. Every Puppet Theater does a Christmas lesson, festival of lesson and carols every year. And one of these days I want to add the little drummer boy for a song. But I need an ox. I have a lamb and I need to create another drummer boy for a person, but I wanted to make an ox. And I didn't want to use these cups for the ox because I wanted him to be bigger than that because most of my puppets are about 18 inches tall. So I've been waiting now for five and a half years to finally have my ox feet. Guess what these are? They are off liquid laundry detergent. And I've been saving them and washing them in my puppet box. I finally have four of them. I can make my ox. Medicine bottles are great for shape and weight. If you want, we're going to be making a marionette in a later video. And one of the things you can get are the lids off of the top of med medicines. Now, you probably don't take medicines, but your grandparents probably do, your parents probably do. Somebody in your family must have medicines. Ask them to please save the bottles. Because you used to be you turn a medicine bottle and you got your medicine filled up and got it back. Now you get a new bottle every time you get medicine, which means you have a new potential foot for a puppet and a new leg for a puppet. Put them in a jar. When you get four of them, you can think about making a critter. If you only have two, you can make a bird. Socks. Socks are wonderful. Because we all have those socks in our drawer we wish weren't still in our drawer. If you put them on your hand and you put the heel over your knuckles like this and you stuff the toe into your hand, you have beginnings of a mouth puppet. And they can smile, they can frown, they can smile, and they can talk. Get a different color sock, you can even have hair. Socks from your drawer. Don't throw your old socks out. Not only do they make great rags, but they make great puppets as well. Especially cotton socks. Tin cans, what can you do with a tin can? This tin can, I think it was probably peaches because I love fresh, I love canned peaches. I have a can, I have an old athletic sock, and I have a styrofoam ball and some fabric paint, and I have a little bit of fuzzy fur and some glue and a ribbon, and I have a peekaboo puppet. Really common stuff. I did buy new socks for the, making these because I taught a class on it, but for the most part you could use one of your old socks too. It takes a long sock to do this, but if I've made little ones out of little bitty cans. I've made big ones out of these big veggie cans, tomato sauce cans. Whatever the size of your ball is the size of the can you use for this. Peekaboo. And don't forget your supplies. I have a whole collection of googly eyes. This is, I think, um, it was a, a Tylenol or some kind of a, I think it was probably the Equate version of it, but I keep clear jars, plastic, so they don't have to worry about them breaking, and I keep my googly eyes in one, I keep my colored ones in one, I keep my white ones in some, 
etc. If you have paper in your house, you have puppet potential. We have another video on our YouTube channel that has these paper puppets in them. It's just a piece of paper folded in three pieces, glued together, and drawn on with marking pens. That's all it is. Paper. You have you need a paper, you have potential puppets. This is finally, I collect cats. I drink a lot of water, bottled water. I drink soda. I drink Gatorade. Depending on, I have water caps in here. Depending on what you use, I collect caps. One of these days, this jar is going to be full and I'll stop collecting caps for a while. But one of these days, I'm going to string these little caps together and I'm going to have a long snake. And I'm either going to put it on strings or I'll put it on rods and I'll have a snake puppet. I have enough of these water bottle caps that I could probably make a big dinosaur-like thing and I could glue these on and paint them green and I'd have it look like I have scales on the outside of it. I might also use the big ones for feet. Never know. You can do anything. Collect it. It's an interesting shape. Doesn't matter what color it is. It doesn't matter what it's made out of. If it's an interesting shape, it has a potential to be a puppet. And I think that's it for today. So look around your house as materials come in, as your mom unpacks the groceries, as you start looking at the packaging. Is it a box? Is it a tube? Is it paper? Is it plastic? How might I use this? Don't forget, if you finish that roll of tape, you've got a nice roll here that has the potential to be a puppet, especially if I have a couple medicine jars for legs. I'm starting to make a marionette with a roll from paper, tape, and some medicine cup. Puppet potential. Look at everything in the world as puppet potential and collect things. Keep them nice and neat in a box. Don't throw them in the closet. This particular box didn't have puppet potential, but it had certain storage potential, and all I did was feed my cat some treats. That's it. We'll see you later on the next Every Map Up Theater video.